right. Um, good evening. Good to see you. This is Kivumbi 2017. We're looking at the presidential petition. All lies, not just in Kenya, but the entire region and probably then t the international arena as well has been focused on the presidential petition 2017. Um, lots of arguments, uh, lots of uh, submissions taking place today. Let's have a conversation about what happened in the, the Supreme Court today. In studio, we have Nelson Harvey, who's a lawyer, and we also have uh, Joy uh, Brenda Mdivo. I, uh, I, I almost called you something else. Okay. Good to have you in studio. Thank you for creating time for us. It's good to so, be here. Harvey, let me begin with you, and of course, without getting into the merits and the demerits of what happened um, in the Supreme Court. What stood out for you today listening to the submissions? What happened in court today? I think uh, looking at uh, the case, uh, the manner in which it was re uh, presented and the manner in which it was responded to, it is uh, quite clear that uh, the, the issues are very straightforward and simplistic. They may not be as complex as the documents filed by Raila and the responses filed by Uru Kenyatta and IBC may seem to be. I, I, the, the main contest will be whether or not uh, IBC uh, conducted the transmission of the election results in the manner set out by the Constitution, by the Elections Act, and in conformity with the decision by the Court of Appeal that finality of results declared at the constituency yeah. should be the ones that should be adhered to. And then, of course, there was also that issue of the election offences, which uh, appeared to have been uh, centre stage uh, as a ground in support of uh, Raila's petition. And then uh, lastly, there was the issue of the irregularities, which uh, are claimed to have uh, arisen either as a result of uh, recklessness or intentional uh, uh, sabotage on the part of the IBC. Mm. In my view, the, the case crystallizes on those three main points. It, it, it's yet to be seen what will come out of the audit tomorrow, uh, whether or not the main irregularities pointed out today will be proven and if at all, what direction the case may take thereafter. Mm, Joy, have you said don't let the big volumes of everything that was presented there scare you? What are your thoughts in, te in terms of what this happened This is actually today? true. When you hear that the judge is talking about, please frame the issues. That's technically what they're saying. They're like, fine, we have all this, but all this cannot be what your case is about. What are you really angling for? And I remember there's a time uh, during the proceedings, we even had the judges would interject and tell counsel, Okay, fine, we hear all that, but tell you what, why don't you just attack your main point rather than go on an expedition? Mm. Now, the, the importance, I think, of having that as well is looking at the time constraints. You'd rather know we are dealing with one, two, three, four, five points and leave out the side shows so that the critical uh, bits of the case actually get enough attention rather than dealing with every single thing that could and would have gone wrong. So you only deal with the things that given the, the nature of the, of the election, would actually affect the outcome if indeed they are proved to have gone wrong or do go wrong. So what we saw today, I think, is for the lawyers, this was a really lovely day because, I oh. mean, you sit there and you get Joy, to see... Joy, how the many good... hours down the line? Yes, because, day, yes. you know, for us, you're seeing a lot of the great Nine hours. guys who you really want to listen to. And for, for someone like me, that was just heaven and earth, just listening to the different arguments and taking our own notes and doing whatnot. But at the end of the day, for the common Mananchi, they also need to be able to distill something out of it. So mm. I'm glad that it is being taken quite quickly because it's better than having a trial that will last 100 days. In the next two days, people would have been able to sort of crystallize where this is, in their opinion, layman as it may be, where this would go to or maybe shed light on what mm. could have gone wrong and make it a bit more understandable for people. And clearly, that's why you guys are here. You need to help my viewers understand what exactly is going on. So, Harvey, the petitioners have been granted a read-only copy of information relating to the number of servers without, of course, endangering their firewall. Um, how significant is this for you? Now, be, be, before the electronic... And by the way, yeah. both of you, if I say anything that touches on the merits and demerits of this thing, <laughs> please just warn me. I don't want to get in trouble. Harvey, go. <laughs> yeah, the... Uh, before the, 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 the coming into effect of an electronic uh, voter transmission system and uh, biometric voter identification, we used to have uh, a purely manual uh, system. And uh, a scrutiny or recount was based on the, on the paperwork. But you see, the manner in which this election was conducted, a substantial part of it was sustained on the electronic platform. Now, if you saw the concession that was made by IBC 
on uh, on Saturday that they will give access to Form 34A and Form 34B. It came as a matter of uh, logical consequence that uh, if the court was to be duly informed about the manner in which the system has grown, and it is quite evident the court was so informed, then of necessity they had to allow a limited access mm. to the server because the server contains a substantial portion of the electronic system that can only be used together with the now hard copies of the forms 34A and 34B. In, it is therefore my expectation that uh, this, uh, this, this exercise will enable uh, both parties, the, the respondent and the petitioner, establish the bona fides of uh, either the claim or mm. the response. And much will turn out from this report. If it tends to support the claims by Raila Odinka that uh, there was a breach which could have uh, been uh, in intended to project certain results with a view of doctoring the results uh, that were eventually declared, then it may give some momentum to his petition. If uh, it doesn't disclose uh, anything that uh, marries with his initial uh, allegations, mm. then it may also indicate a particular direction that uh, the, the outcome of the petition will be headed. But I think if you compare it to the manner in which the Supreme Court handled this issue in 2013, uh -huh. this is a, a big step towards enabling uh, parties bring out the entire case rather than uh, shutting them out of the opportunity of giving evidence and making a decision purely on theoretical foundations. I think it's proper that the court has given both parties an opportunity to investigate the, the server, not to interfere with it. I think read only read only it's just come, come into the, 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 the library what you want look at it, make copies yeah. don't obliterate, don't tear the pages it, it basically means that mm. and without uh, access if at all there is credible uh, merit in uh, Raila's uh, argument, he should be able to say it if there's no credibility in his argument it will come out mm. Joy, um, there are certain procedures that are followed legally before you admit any evidence in court. So the question that's on the mind of Kenyans is, okay, fine. So the results of the audit come in tomorrow, I believe, in the evening at about 5. How then does this get, um, how, how do we make it admissible into, into the Supreme Court now? Okay, first, before I even go to your question, there's something that uh, my colleague has said that I don't quite agree with. In fact, our, our elections are not largely electronic, they're largely manual. And the only part that the electronics came in was in transmitting the, manual, the results from the manual process. We use physical papers, we put a tick, we put it in a box, the papers are counted physically, forms are filled by the agents. So the only part technology came in was in transmitting those results. And now, coming to your question, tomorrow when we get the, re the report, all we'll be looking at is, is there congruence between what has come out of the physical 34Bs and what is already input in the, that, in the, in the, um, in the servers, in their systems. If there's congruence, then fine. If there's no congruence, then what is the problem? Was it by issue of malice or was it something that is explained? If neither of those is proven, then as Harvey correctly says, mm. then we'll know whether the case is proved or not proved. So now coming tomorrow afternoon, because this is a process that the courts made a ruling this morning, and they have given the parameters within which what will be admitted and when it will be admitted, the time is quote unquote enlarged to allow that particular report to be made. So unlike the other affidavits that were judged to be out of time this morning and were told, okay, we will not rely on those, this particular report is something that has been allowed by the court. Indication has been given as to what sort of report they're expecting. And they've also given indication as to how long the parties have to interact with the report before the matter is discussed. So it's, um, in terms of timelines, mm. it has been, the provision for this report has been made provision for. And the reason for that is very simple. As uh, Harvey has correctly pointed out, we saw that the petitioner made a very large case about the transmission and uh, the allegation of hacking or no hacking or interference uh, by a human rather than what we were made to believe was going to be totally um, electronic has been made. So for that particular allegation to be disproved, the only person with the access was the IEBC, the legal person with the access. And so now the IEBC had to be compelled to hand over, sort of, uh, like, give us the keys 
so that we can look for ourselves. And that's what they've had to do today. But it's very interesting that it was made read only because we do understand that the system is supposed to be very, very technical. It's supposed to have a, a specific um, security features which, if exposed to the public, mm -hmm. can uh, give room to hackers. And the IEBC is concerned that with the amount of money that the Kenyan people have invested in this particular system, the integrity of the, because it wasn't procured just for the 2017 election, this was procured for posterity or for maybe two or three circles at least, so to get our money's worth, the security should not be um, um, breached because that would void any warranty that we have with Saffron, and that then would make it basically a useless system, meaning next election cycle we'd have to procure something else. Mm. So it, it's a delicate balancing act, but I think the courts did a good job in trying to uh -huh. balance um, the expectations of the petitioners as well as the concerns of the IEBC, and I hope everybody will behave themselves. But you say balance, where does that balance, where is that balance for The you? balance is in the sense that NASA really, really wants to look at these servers, really, really wants to see this information. And a lot of their case hinges on it. And without this critical component of their case, uh, uh, chances of failure are high. So the court wants to give the petitioner the opportunity to prove their case. Because, like I said, the only person who had access to that information was the IEBC. And the IEBC were not giving it up without a fight. Mm. But on the other hand, the concerns raised by the IEBC on behalf of the Kenyan people are valid. If the system is actually interfered with by a person other than the ones who are supposed to go into the system, then the opportunity for hackers is open, is available, and Saffron now will no longer be able to tell you. We, we, they cannot, we cannot backstop with them. The amount of money we've spent on this particular system means that it will basically be not as secure as we want to believe mm. it is right now. And then moving forward, it means we'll have to find something else. So the court has tried to tell them, look, just read, don't touch anything, don't break anything, just go in there like good boys and girls, like Harvey says, and, don't and try out any papers, don't don't, don't, just, just read, photocopy what you need, take a screenshot and get out and scrutinize that, rather than trying to get into the nitty gritty of how it works. Because once you get any tech person who gets into that and gets information out, mm. Russia, and American and election. It's a win-win situation, you think? Hopefully. Yes. Uh, <laughs> in, in my opinion, it's a win-win situation. But I think more on the favor of uh, Raila. Reason being, you remember, even before the declaration of the winner of this election, they'd made a request uh, to IBC to allow them just to interrogate the server and establish a few things in respect of the log, where after they'll be able to give their go-ahead uh, as to uh, the fact that they agree with the results as declared. Mm. And uh, IBC was very adamant, said we wouldn't allow this. And even as the request was made uh, in court, although IBC being the person who has been sued is entitled to object to it, I think uh, there was no really credible reason as to why they had to object to it, because that system uh, sustains a substantial part of the finality of the election exercise. Now, to that extent, there may be this perception that IBC was uh, hiding something. Mm -hmm. But I think by the court giving an opportunity, and remember the opportunity has not been given to Raila alone. Even President Huru Kenyatta has also been given the same opportunity that has been uh, accorded to Raila to, to have a look at this system. So that, uh, in my opinion, mm -hmm. I think over and above determining the current dispute before the Supreme Court, Maybe it may be also an issue for law reform and to interrogate the manner in which the system works. Because you remember, even before the election, there was a lot of litigation challenging the manner of procurement of many of these yeah. providers. Yeah. So this may be an opportunity either to demonstrate that the system indeed works and uh, the procurement was based on, uh, on good reason. And we can now comfortably say we'll have a system of monitoring and oversighting elections in Kenya that is for posterity and not just for a limited period of time. Okay, um, now that we're having this conversation, could we listen in to what um, the petitioner's um, legal counsel, James Sorengo, had to say with respect to time? The time it will take. You are saying, wait a minute. So, so. You are saying yourself it will take a few hours? The other side are saying it will take even uh, three weeks. I mean, do you have an, an, an expert opinion well, 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 on well, this well. to tell us that this is uh, a 30 minutes exercise? This well, is well, 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 Lord, for example, if I wanted to know uh, access to the register, all I need is to have access. 
I don't need that server to be brought here. Once I'm given, yeah. once I'm given access, I can be able to determine who are the uh, uh, registered voters in the register of voters. Similarly, 40,000 forms which are scanned and, uh, and is in the database, if I'm given access, it will not fill more than uh, 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 400 pages. Mm. So James Oranga, they are asking uh, for time to look into the IEBC servers, and of course that was granted. Uh, Joy, take me through this whole process. So tomorrow there's a report that is given um, based on the audit, and then? Then the judges will listen to the final submissions, and then they retire to take the judgment, because this is going to be the very last thing that is done. Because mm. today the petitioner lead their case. We listened also to um, the... Um, the interested party in support of the petitioner. We listened to part of the case from the IEBC. So we are left, I think, with the third respondent for tomorrow and the, the amicus briefs. And once that is in and then we get the report in, then that is it with the, with the evidence. And so now the judges just take closing submissions. So Maybe they'll do from tomorrow, submissions. probably they listen to everyone they're supposed to listen to. I think that's what they're gunning for. Uh. They were trying to get as much done today. And I think the initial um, hope was that they would get all the evidence led today, but it was quite a heavy day. And it got to a place where it was clear to everybody that energy levels were low and the information now was getting to a place, it was saturation. Mm. So tomorrow we are, uh, we'll see a much lighter day. And I think that's why they're starting at 11 a.m. So they have some time to also digest what they've gone through today and start forming the opinion. Because you start writing your judgment from the moment evidence is led. Right, because that's that when you start long... getting persuaded. You start forming the building blocks of whatever you're going to use in your... So the, the part of establishing the facts, mm -hmm. that's a part of the judgment that they can already be working on in the back of their mind. So tomorrow morning up until 11 a.m., that's what I'm seeing them doing, decompressing what happened the previous day, defragmenting it, putting it in bite-sized chunks. So that by the time the petitioner, the third petitioner case comes, it's building what, on what they already have. Then the gap that was left in the petitioner's case um, uh, with the report now is filled in at the end. And then they have almost all the information that they need. Mm -hmm. Then now they just invite closing arguments. Once they have that in place, they're like, okay, see you guys they should be Friday. By Friday. We'll tell you what's going on. So okay. I, that's what I anticipate will happen tomorrow. So this way you guys get a free lesson, right? on ICT and how it works and read only and what it means and what it doesn't mean. So we have uh, Mark Obar, who is our in-house ICT expert. Mark, good to see you. Good to see you. So, read only copy. What yeah. does read only mean? Let's start from there. Read only means that these are accessibilities in terms of user levels. It means that in every system, there are people who are given access to certain options within the system or certain activities that they can carry out. So within, with regards to read only, they can see whatever is in the system. They can make transfers of whatever is in the system in terms of collecting the evidence, but they cannot do any modification over either the system or whatever they want within the system. If they want to do any modi modification mm. or change of format, then that must be extracted out is when you do that. Can they dig in for information in, in the system? Yes. Now, a system is very, very interesting in, in terms of uh, its nature and how it works. Because a system, uh, there are layers of uh, different systems. Mm. For example, in the case of IEBC, they would want to know which kind of systems they had. We rem you remember the KM system is an integration of several systems brought together, which would help in identification, uh, in the storage, and in the transfer of, of voters or registries mm. or everything else. So those, all those systems, they have to go through them, whether it's a content management system, that which is holding certain contents like those uh, um, soft copy forms and all that. It's important that they go through every system and analyze every system. Uh, they don't have time. Yeah. Time is of essence. So True. how do you get through all these volumes of, of, of data? Now, interestingly, with the ICT or uh, a, in a digital space or a digital environment, it's quite different from the physical environment. You may have 90,000 or 40,000 uh, papers or uh, copies, which you can only extract within minutes. It, in other words, uh, you really need to know whatever you are going for 
and then get that footprint in terms of knowing what you want and then you can even get it within minutes but then the bulk of the uh, task is mm. to analyze whatever you've gotten and try to put it in the right so perspective getting as an evidence. Problem. The problem is so analyzing it. Yeah, getting it and getting it right. Because probably there are also people who may want to play mischief on you and you may think that you are smart enough, <laughs> but there are people who would also want to manipulate the entire system, giving you a raw deal in the same system that you're looking okay, for. Okay, define getting it right. How do you get it right? Now, getting it right, first like of all, involves getting the right team. It means that you must have the smartest of the smartest handling that issue. People who who can uh, identify faults, people who can identify discrepancies, people who can identify uh, right activities, wrong activities. Because the Supreme, the Supreme Court, actually, uh, as the lawyers will tell you, and we, here. we have one of the They're smartest here. around, <laughs> um, there is what is known as the evidence, uh, the evidence, uh, the law of evidence, in uh -huh. other words. Now, this is probably what the Supreme Court used to guide in developing a model that would be used by some of those experts who are going to extract this evidence. evidence. Yeah. In other words, it creates a model, and within this model, you're going to create standards of operation that are also going to guide the experts who are going to handle this hold evidence. On, hold on. Yeah. Hold on. Um, Zevi, if you can walk with me, because this is interesting. This is, this, we're doing this for our viewers. Harvey, law of evidence. Mm -hmm. Guide me through that. What is law of evidence? Now, the expert there, as he's been speaking, to, to us, it almost sounds like Professor Lumumba speaking <laughs> to most of you. But anyway, you see, under the Evidence Act, the best uh, evidence is the primary evidence, the document itself, mm. the original of that. Now, that uh, requirement is confounded when you're dealing with electronic uh, evidence because it is not in paper. So you either have to get uh, the, the footprints or the things they call the logs of how information was accessed. Then you translate it into a report in paper. And then for ease of communication with, the, with, with lawyers, who though extremely learned, uh, do not find a lot of learning in that field. <laughs> in what Mark is saying. Yes, in what Mark is saying. Yeah. Now, uh, for, for that reason, you see the court uh, is asking to be given an opportunity uh, to examine that which is electronic in a simplistic statistical manner so that you are able to identify, okay, fine. If the system was supposed to function in this particular way, in which way was it breached to transmit results in the manner in which Raila claims it was transmitting results at a predetermined uh, interval and pace mm. of 11% uh, between the lead candidate and the following candidate? Now, you see, those are complex issues which uh, by all means cannot be... Only Mark can help us to understand... <laughs> can, cannot be understood on paperwork uh. unless and until they are reduced into uh, effect as regards the physical forms and results that we have. Okay, so Mark, yes. we are done. At least our viewers have an idea what you're talking about, so go on. Uh -huh. Yeah, now, for, first of all, this, what we need to understand is that this uh, cyber forensic analysis, mm. analysis mm. or scrutiny in terms of layman's language. Now, this begins from a point of understanding what you're looking for as an expert. Because the Supreme Court has provided guidance in terms of what you can touch and what you what can't, can't touch. touch. So uh, that guidance is very, very important because one, it safeguards the, the environment or the ecosystem within which these people are going to operate. Second thing, what it does is that it defines the activities that are going to take place within that system. And the third thing is that it allows you, it gives you permission to access certain activities. So there are some things that you cannot be denied because you are operating under the authority of the Supreme Court. What are these things that you cannot be denied? So first of all, you have to understand that once you, you understood what you are going to look for, then you go directly to the system. So it begins from the collection of evidence, then it goes into examination of evidence, then it goes to analysis of evidence, then it goes after analysis, then it goes to uh, de presentation, uh, development of a report, and then presentation of that report. Mm. Now, in the development, some of these activities are quite complex because they really touch on the very integral part of a system. And a system like elect uh, a technology a system is very, very complex. It's a comprehensive one. It means that you must get the right people who are going to handle that. And getting the right people who are going to handle that are people who are, will understand the system within the shortest period of time. Because you need and smart people who will get yes. to the system and just know, I need one, two, three, I four. I need one, two, three, four. Yeah. And in fact, in this case, 
uh, for example, if NASA, NASA think of the petitioners or, or the people yeah. who, are, mm -hmm. who did the application. Mm, at petitioners, the yes. Yes. These people who did the, 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 the application at the Supreme Court, by now they should be understanding that where are the probabilities of getting, what is the probability of getting this evidence within this framework? So they should go directly, mm. narrow it down to the specifics of what they're looking for, areas or regions which they think that were really affected by this. So they can go, for example, if it's Nairobi, then you pick directly, you look for evidence oh, relating Nairobi, to Nairobi. DC. Yeah, those specific areas, because yeah. you don't have the luxury of time. And as such, you have to concentrate on piercing it together within the right context. What kind of people, what kind of um, expertise should NASA now be looking for in terms of the people they send to look for this information? Now, this something in, in a larger context is something that you would do broadly, probably in a uh, forensic laboratory and all that, which is not existing at the moment. Yeah, clearly. So what they would do, I think they would form teams, as the Supreme Court had done. That team is going to work. But again, within it, this bigger team, there must be also a team from President Kenyatta's side, mm -hmm. from uh, Prime Minister Raila's from side, all the and all that. These teams, the simple thing they're going to do is that because each team will be working for their own benefit. That is one thing that these people have to understand. The only neutral person there yeah. is the Supreme Court, uh, the people who have been seconded by the Supreme Court. The rest, they are work fighting it out right from the experts to the lawyers to the Supreme Court and the presentation and adduction of this evidence, they all of it. Okay. So, in other words, you need probably computer scientists, data mining engineers, you need uh, computer engineers, and if you're lucky, you get industrial technologists who do you a good justice. Mm. Yeah. So, there's another thing as well. They were also allowed, let mm. me see if I can get that, they were granted access to IBC servers without endangering the firewall. They're also given access of login trails of users into IBC yeah. servers. Yeah. Uh. Now, this, it's a very simple thing. One thing that you need to know about digital communication is that nothing, is, nothing can be deleted, nothing can go away. Once you do something, it remains. So, uh, for example, if somebody accessed a certain computer or accessed a server, accessed a system and all that, the trail of that person is quite evident at every stage and every level. Mm. So they, in this system, there are some things known as user level. Probably when, when, when NASA gave out certain, uh, some logs at some point, you add them talking about super admin, such mm. like stuff. Mm. Yeah? Mm. It simply means that this user level, there is a person who can access the system up to a given level and can do certain modifications. There is this person. So, first of all, this allows them to trace who and who did what at what particular oh, moment. Oh, so they can trace that. Yeah, okay. you can trace. And these logs will also be communicating to you in terms of presenting to you that when was this system installed, who installed it, how was it installed, what has, was it supposed to execute, what is it doing, and what has, what has it done? So, for example, the Supreme Court has clearly indicated that it should be between 5th to 11th. Mm. So, clearly, they are just going to do that extraction to get it and analyze it. And the most important part of this exercise is to analyze that data, examine mm. it and analyze it with regards to getting that evidence. Because it's not just evidence because you found certain uh, disparities or uh, malpractices. Mm. You must also create a scene within the context of presentation about that evidence. Okay, Mark, stay with me. There's a formula which we need to sort of work on with you here, so you need to stay here. So we have Nelson Harvey and uh, Joy. Nelson, is, is Mark making sense? Mark is making a lot of sense. Yeah. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, optimistic. What, what, uh, what, what has come across from him yeah. reminds me of what we used to do in statistics. Uh, it's, it's quite uh, correct. Uh, I think the, the footprints of any invasion uh, into the system are likely to be, to be disclosed, if at all they were. Uh -huh. Now, if you remember very well, Raila's main complaint was that uh, the system was tampered with uh, as a result uh, of hosting the server uh, outside the jurisdiction of Kenya, contrary to the advice of the uh, Communications Authority of Kenya. And as a result of that, there is a possibility either a third party uh, breached the system and started projecting these results, or IBC intentionally allowed that third party to do this. And if you remember very well, it seems to suggest that 
that projection that appeared uh, on, on TV, so to speak, on the portal, was intended to beguile the public to have the erroneous notion that Raila is, uh, is trailing, whereas Uhuru is leading. And if you saw in the submissions by IBC's lawyer today, uh, my, my learned colleague uh, Paul Nyamodi, oh, uh -huh. he was put to task to explain what exactly were these results that you were projecting? Were they provisional? Were they final results? And remember his answer was, these were the final results. And then the query came in, if they were the final results, why at one point did the chairman of the IBC say these are provisional? And to that extent, they need not to be taken into account. Now, therein lies the strength of Raila's case. And this, if supported by the report that Mark has given us an indicator on, mm. may give uh, some life, if at all. If it doesn't, then it may diminish the, the existence of the entire claim. Okay, Joy, um, so of course NASA's team have been given the okay to audit the IBC service. Um, and there is a conversation that's doing rounds that probably we are seeing an improvement in terms of the judicial process, that, like in terms of a presidential petition. This is very different from 2013. Yes. Um, if you are to compare the two, what, what, what comes to mind in terms of how different are they? What sets them apart? One thing that we see this time is that the judges are very firm in control of the process. They have been very firm on the timelines. They have been very firm on the process that is being adopted. This is something that we did not see in 2013 because in 2013 there was an attempt at uh, trying to curb time but people really went overboard and the judges had very little time left at the end to consider the case. Another thing that we have seen is how they have looked at the issues of interested parties and amicus briefs. They have really limited the, uh, the number to begin mm. with and also the scope. So that, for example, um, you look at somebody like the LSK came in and they had a whole application on how they're going to, uh, they wanted to be amicus and what they wanted to bring to the table so that they can be considered for amicus. And the judges basically said, yes, we, we can have you as amicus, but tell you what, we need a little bit of research on Section 83 of the Elections Act, and we think you guys are just the ticket to do it. <laughs> Same thing that they did with the Attorney General. Yeah. Yes. You remember in 2013, the Attorney General was literally like one of the parties was all over the, his fingerprint was all over the case. Mm -hmm. But in this particular situation, we told, tell you what, we really think you also are a very good friend to have, but That's... you also can just do some research for us, talk to us about the Mainakia case. Now, that is something different from uh, what you saw in 2013, because that time, everybody just ran roughshod of the court. Another thing we see this time is that the judges are also... As the papers kept coming in, mm. the judges did a lot of preparation work prior to. And you can tell, even as the, the lawyers are presenting their cases, the level of engagement with the judges, you can tell they have a drift of what is going oh. on. So they're not just, you know, floating along and hoping to get the inspiration. Now, they've already read through the papers, they've already grasped the articles. And there's a time even the, the pens were put down and the judges just took time to sort of interact and listen to the and let the stenographer do the recording. So you can tell, even from the onset, that the, the judges this time around are determined to stay on top of it and not to let... Because even if they give us a six-minute ruling on Friday, which they're quite entitled to, mm -hmm. you can expect that what they produce in the 14 days after that, when they're writing the substantive judgment, will be something well-reasoned this time around. Another thing that we have, we've had a lot of electoral reforms between 2013 and now. The laws are a lot clearer. What we're dealing with is a lot more robust. It's something that, and with all the litigation that NASA engaged in prior to the elections, I mean, they got a lot of this stuff already out of the way. So we already have rulings on the same. So even with the trial where we are right now, the judges are coming from a place of a lot more clarity than what we had in 2013. Because 2013, it was a brand new constitution, it was a brand new court, and the, the, the judicial officers then, a few of them were not career judicial officers. So this was the, literally being thrown off the deep end when you cannot swim. But now you've got seasoned uh, judges lots of who have, people like Judge Lenaola talk constitutional law, I mean in Kenya, he almost has no equal. But now you're finding that there's strength in the judicial officers. Even people like Akina Jack, uh, Judge Njoki now cannot really be considered rookies. They've been on the Supreme Court for a little while, and so they're not as green as they were then, literally uh. and figuratively. They're not as green as they were then. They're now red and black. Yeah. But 
that is something that we are seeing different this time around. And what we can expect, therefore, is that whatever comes out of this situation is not just going to move us forward in terms of this particular le election, but it's going to also be very good jurisprudence that is going to be useful in future election petitions. You're aware that we have uh, observers from the mm. from Africa and other judicial institutions. Kenya is actually one of those countries where they're benchmarking for these decisions because other countries are also going to go into elections and they're going to quote in the Kenya case. They're yes. going to they're going to so and it's good that we have that reasoned and seasoned judgment. And this time around I'm I'm a lot more hopeful for especially looking now at jurisprudentially a decision that we are going to be proud of, mm -hmm. not just giving a resolution to the parties, but even for the, the rule of law, it's going to move us forward and highlight any loopholes that may have been left so that if there's need for more reform, we have the opportunity and the, the footing on which to do it. Mm, Javi, how hopeful are you? Well, uh, hopeful of what? <laughs> so you just said you're, you're more hopeful in terms of the yeah. jurisprudence that is now being said. Javi? Uh, I, I, I think uh, I must agree with, the, with what Joyce says. This court appears to be more mature and more prepared and well informed than the court in 2013. Mm. Now, uh, there was this perception from the public that uh, this court was uh, very commanding, uh, very uh, directory on the parties. But you see, that is uh, not the case. Whenever you see a judge ask a question to the lawyer, whenever you see them interject, it's a sign that they either want to understand or uh, they have found fault in a particular line of argument that they want you to expound on. Now contrast this with what happened in 2013. Sorry to say, but uh, the, the, the Chief Justice who was in control of that court was, uh, was very quiet. And you see, you're always in trouble if you have a quiet judge because you don't oh, understand don't they whether, <laughs> whether they, they, they know the case. So you guys like yes. judges who talk? Yes, like judges who talk give you an indicator okay. as to whether they have understood your line of, uh, of argument. And you could even see when they were handling the applications on, uh, on, on, on Saturday, they were very accommodative. You could see Justice Lenola ask, uh, how will you present the outcome of this inquiry. Mm. You could see Justice Maraga ask, what is the time constraint? How much, uh, time, do you need? How much time do you need? You could see Justice uh, Ibrahim uh, give an example of what had happened before. And you see, that is the way a court is supposed to work. Because the Supreme Court, for all practical purposes, is a people's court. People need to understand what is happening. They just uh, cannot get satisfied when, on, on a Friday, you come with a, with a two-page decision and you tell them, okay, we have three issues that we've considered. Issue yeah. number one, we've dismissed it. Issue number two, we've dismissed it. Then you walk away. Because, uh, look, the election of the president cannot by any means be compared to the election of member of, uh, of a county assembly or... Uh, or uh, any other position for that Or matter. any other position. Because we have a presidential system where everything anchors on the legitimacy of the president. And you see... If the court takes a very restricted approach of just solving the problem to the lawyers, mm. what about the people? Because we're talking about uh, uh, 15 million people who voted. Mm. Mm. We're talking about a population of about 40 million Kenyans. Yeah. They need to know. And it became quite clear yesterday that uh, the Chief Justice and uh, his court tried to simplify the proceedings as much as possible. Because uh, if, for instance, evidence was thrown away like happened in 2013, people will ask, but that was our case. But that was our case. Yeah, why, why have you thrown it? But you can see this time a balancing was made. The, the chief justice asked the parties, I mean, for heaven's sake, must we fight over this? Why can't we just accommodate everybody who has filed his documents or who has served his documents out of time? And we get into the issue. What are the issues? You have 28 mm. issues. You have two issues. You have five issues. What is the big deal? Submit on everything you want to submit. Because, I mean, at the tail end of this discourse, we as the judges know what the real issues are. And you can see as day succeeds night, as and when the advocates were submitting, you could see the judges had a clarity of where they wanted the advocates to expound their case on mm -hmm. and where the weaknesses, if in their case, lay. You could see like uh, Justice uh, Professor Ojuang went first with that issue of, uh, 
the credibility of the systems as a result of the death of Chris uh, Musando put to task uh, the lawyer who was handling the issue. So what significance should we place on this particular evidence? Okay. And you could see at the tail end and the summation of that discussion, uh, Senator James Orengo came out quite clear and said, yes, we are relying on the evidence of uh, Chris, not as a, a dying declaration, but as a confirmation that we got a legitimate expectation from the IBC, which is a public body, okay. about the sanctity of this system. And for that reason, we want to put IBC to its word. This is what you, are, you told us through uh, one of uh, your, 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 your staff. This is what has happened. And then for that reason, we need to interrogate why in particular it didn't go as we were told. Okay. Joy, um, how exactly are these judges going to come up with a decision? Do they do this together? Do they do this individually? How does it work? The mass conference, because that's another thing that is distinctive between this particular bench and the bench in 2013. Because in 2013, they thought, and like I said, they let the parties take too long in the courtroom that they did not have enough time when they retired. Mm. So they split up the case into chunks and said, you work on that, you work on that, you work on that, and then you come and patch things up and deliver it. And now what we ended up with was a, a judgment, all right, but like I said, jurisprudentially did not move us yeah. very far. And they did solve our immediate problem in giving us a decision on either or, but it did not help us to understand what really went on, what really went wrong. And now this time around, what we, we do expect from the judges is that there will be a conference, there will be a caucusing. And most probably, I, I know NASA made a big push about each of the judges should give an individual ruling, but I, I doubt with the time constraint as well, that is something that any of the judges would be willing to task themselves with. Mm. Because remember this time around, they have to work within the 14 days. Uh, there's, there's no way they don't around have a it. Choice. They must do it. Okay. So I, I would see a situation where, by, if you, you can even see from the rulings, it will be succinct, it will be well reasoned. But I have a feeling they will be trying to go for a majority. So unless there's somebody who has a really dissenting view, I do not see that it will come in bits and pieces. Okay. But I also do expect that the the judges will, will also go at great pains. Most probably on Friday we'll get the, the two-pager just telling us, you know what, this is where we're headed. But when the substantive judgment is finally published, I'm sure we will see the nitty-gritty broken down because look at this ruling that was read this morning by Judge Lenaola. It's, it's a work of art, really, because if you're looking at some of the things that they are grappling with, yeah. for non-tech minds they actually were able to break down some of these issues very succinctly, which tells us that they, they're making the effort mm. to understand mm. and not just looking for an escapist. So I'm looking forward, even moving forward, we'll have, a, we must have a very, you see the size. You're like, actually I'm, very I'm giving, excited. It's going to be a very bulky judgment. I mean, <laughs> when, when you read a good judgment it's, mm. for, for a lawyer, it, it, it satisfies your intellectual capacity that the people who've put in all this hard work, spent all this time living in court, were actually hard considered and the reason judgment you're actually come looking out. forward to it yes because look at how much you know i've been on the on the other end where you're spending three four nights preparing a case and then you go to court and the the judge just gives you you know a little judgment sometimes it feels as if they didn't really get it but these ones look that like they would get it and I'm, I'm glad for that because even for kenyans those who are following yeah when the judgment does come out we should be able like have you said they've really tried to make it as easy to understand as, as easy, possible so as for they, they made it easy for me to understand yes okay apart from the plo beat which most of us <laughs> did not understand okay, anyway like, what exactly was this what exactly no, was this saying? the man is just very very intelligent and we have to give him no that. even if you're intelligent <laughs> I, I mean just say things that people can understand have you what was he saying <laughs> look plo is, is my teacher he preaches in my church i think he speaks very eloquently to yeah. the amusement of the public yeah but uh Look, there was not so much, uh, at least in, in, in what he was handling. Uh, the, the, the better part of the case on the part of IBC and uh, Chemkati were handled by those who preceded him. But okay. it was good entertainment. <laughs> uh, he also simplified with a lot of complication what was he entertaining. He simplified with a lot of, a lot of complication. Listen. What, what was entertainment to the public? Yeah. So, Otinia Molo... Yeah. First of all, I don't do very well with numbers. So Tindia Molo gave a formula, apparently. Uh, um, that one have you answered. <laughs> looks like Pythagoras. <laughs> no, that's what I want to break down for you. 
<laughs> so we have Michael Barr, who is our ICT expert. Um, as I walk towards Mike, can I get a marker pen that's somewhere up there? Mark, yes. I need you to look at that formula for me. Yeah. Joy, you get a free lesson here. <laughs> Could I get a marker pen that's up there, please? Okay. So, Mark, you need to go through, you need to go through that entire formula. Yeah. And, and, of course, without getting into the merits and the demerits of it all. And then um, you can get into the merits, the merits of this. Just yeah. help me to understand what is this formula now, all about. Uh, yeah. now and first of all, what was he saying? Yeah, I think that's very much important for us to really deliberate upon uh, mm. what this guy was talking about. And because people don't understand how mathematics come in a court of law, yeah. or live alone in uh, elections, and especially such... Uh, serious mathematics now first of all according to and we can only make reference to the reports yeah not exactly really what he said yeah the uh, issues that would be prejudicial mm. to to to, yeah, to, and we don't to the proceedings in, in court. now uh, one thing that people need to understand is that uh, computers and the mathematics go hand in hand okay. when we talk about uh, algorithms we are talking about th uh, activities that understand mathematics. We are we're talking about certain commands that understand certain... In fact, a command is a mathematics, in other words, because uh, it, it, like computer operates on uh, zero and one. If it, we talk about uh, plain, plain or layman's mathematics kind mm -hmm. of understanding, where it gives you the result or it doesn't give you the result. Now, in this case, According to what the presentations that was or, or that that were made in court, somehow these guys believe that there is a formula that was used, uh, uh, the linear function that was used to uh, ensure that okay. to keep one this candidate. Is board. To this keep, is your board. This is your board. Yeah, to keep. Can we get a clean one? Yes, we can. To keep, um, <clears throat> could we focus so that my viewers can take a look? Okay, Mark, go. Yeah. Okay, go. Now to keep a candidate. Uh. to keep a candidate on uh, uh, with, with certain margins and all that. Mm. Now, this is a very tricky thing because it's a serious allegation. And should uh, any expert come up and really qualify this with, with, uh, with no doubt at all or with, the so-called reasonable doubt, mm. uh, beyond any reasonable doubt, that would be a huge thing in this country because, first of all, I, I'm almost sure that many people, many election losers will be running to court and probably they will be given access to their Mark, you're going to get me in jail. That. Okay, how does this thing work? Now, for example, <clears throat> let's take this case here. Yeah. yeah. My drawing is a bit sketchy. Don't, don't worry. Now, one thing that you need to understand is that these people are not going to calculating the exact mathematics yeah. that was brought there because mm. that, that will land me into trouble. Mm. But one thing that you need to know is that we have what is known as uh, in, in, independent variable, mm -hmm. and then we have dependent, dependent variable. variable. Okay. Now, what this means that it tries to balance the figures that are available. In terms of, for example, I can say that you're going to live for 100 years. Amen. And uh -huh. someone else must live only for this amount of years if you have to live for 100 years. So in that case, we must ensure that there is a balance in terms of percentage that must be there that separates you and the number of years that you're going to live with the number of years that the de dependent because this is depending on certain numbers that must be gotten this depends on this yeah. yeah now what happens is that when you do it that way it will keep constantly the constant variable that will be running here which separates the two of you must run constantly at any given stage now in this our formula that was presented and everything, there are what we fa refer to as intervals. Now, these intervals can be in terms of the polling stations, they can be in terms of the uh, number of years uh, or a year or mm. after five years or wherever. Mm. So these intervals must be kept by this percentage that must run consistently from one point to the last point or from uh, first police station of tally to the last so police the station of tally. So the percentage keeps them in check. Now the percentage keeps them in check. Okay. Now do you know how this comes into a computer system? Mm. In a computer system, you can also integrate some other systems. For example, you can develop a dimensional analytics system. When you develop this a dimensional analytics system, you give it a command on algorithm 
that can be probably round robbing algorithm that is just a type of algorithm yeah such that if this person ex if if an execution is done to an independent variable with regards to a certain amount of numbers or percentage then this must also maintain the dependent variable must also maintain specific numbers that will keep that trend now on a computer that will do that work will be done by the computer itself or by the system itself okay. it doesn't require a human being to do that all you need to do is to probably prepare um, an independent kind of um, or a server or just find a way of routing all that from one server to the main server and for the projections and all that. So once that is done, then it runs consistently and systematically. Now, proving that this happened will take some time and will take some serious, serious minds to do that. To do that. Yeah, okay. yeah. But it's something that is workable and it's something that is possible. Now, disclaimer, I'm not saying that that is what happened. Mm. Yeah, and that should be very clear. I don't understand how what, what goes on. <laughs> yeah, you're trying, I'm to, I'm you're trying to be participant. very safe here. <laughs> yes, yes. But that, that, that is something that works. Yeah. And again, at some point, these things can also be done at a point when, manually, yeah, where if you know the numbers that you are, if I know the number, for example, you're a candidate A and I'm candidate B, mm. if I know the numbers that you're going to get in a specific polling station, mm. then I can... Uh, input my own numbers to maintain that gap specifically and all that. Okay. Yeah. So, Mark Obar, our in-house ICT expert, thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Nelson Harvey and uh, Joy Brendam Divo, did I help you? <laughs> yes. Harvey, did great, I help you? A, a great deal. In fact, uh, I was uh, thinking of uh, recruiting Mark. Just in case uh, we have to do another election <laughs> petition, or well, this is the best witness we'll have had for this issue. <laughs> it, it comes out quite clear on how this thing will have worked. Uh, Joy, this me, I'm conceding. I have no idea what Mark is talking about. <laughs> and I'm happy in my ignorance for now. <laughs> <laughs> That's what's allowed. <laughs> I, no, I tried to follow it, but I got somewhere and realized, hey, uh -uh. Yeah. yeah. It is not okay. computer. Is, is it a straight line formula, uh, Mark, or is it... Uh, Yes, that's what he like said. That's what he said. That, that was the problem. Yeah, the linear. Yeah. Uh, yes. Have you need to pay me so that I can And actually, uh, uh, there are also there are also other two. It's not only the linear one. You can also even do a geometrical progression okay. that also keeps numbers constantly. So it's it's about it's not just about the. Um, that is why I, I, I take a, a bit of whatever is alleged with a little of a trepidation because probably it's not. Uh, there could be a number of things that would really make numbers. Yeah, a number of, of factors. Okay, so we need to wrap this up. Mark, Mark Obar, Nelson yeah. Harvey, Joy Brendam, Divo people, thank you so much for your time and indeed for watching Kivumbi 2017. Have a good night. We will see you tomorrow. I'm Linda Ogutu.